Hey what's going on guys, Crazy here, welcome back to another Last of Us Part 2 guide here on this channel and in this video let's take a look at all of the weapons that you can get in this game. There's a total of 12 guns that you can find and use in the Last of Us Part 2 with many of them actually making a return from the previous game but of course also deadlier than ever before. In this video I want to focus on the easiest and earliest you can find each and every single one of these weapons since many of them can easily be missed if you aren't paying attention to your surroundings. It also goes without saying that there are some slight spoilers ahead as some of these weapons can only be found towards the later parts of the game so you have been warned but with that being said and done I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it and let's jump right in. Let's begin with the first couple of weapons that Ellie gets to unlock by default anyway which are of course the semi-auto pistol and the bolt action rifle both unlocked during the prologue and you're going to have them by the time you reach the city of Seattle but my favorite has to be the semi-auto pistol it's basically what I've used the most in the entire game and the reason for that is mainly because of the new stealth skill tree that gives you the possibility to immediately start and craft silencers and compared to the first The Last of Us this was such a complete game changer for me because it basically lets you go in an enemy camp put a silencer on your gun and then take down various enemies before you're even detected and sometimes you can even like clear up an entire enemy camp and if you're doing it properly nobody is ever going to even know your position but of course you're going to need enough ammo and resources to craft enough silencers um, the bolt action rifle is another amazing gun all around it's basically one of the first rifles or ways to scope enemies from afar assuming of course you're also investing some points into that six time scope and I definitely recommend you go ahead and do so because it's a lifesaver you can get enemies from so far away and there's only one other other weapon that you can use in order to like kind of snipe people from afar but this is by far the best one of them and it also deals a ton of damage which I also suggest to further invest points into that damage skill right there since basically it means you're going to be able to one shot almost everything outside of the clickers and maybe some of the big enemies. Now the third weapon that you can get is the revolver and you can also get this in the prologue section of the game of course in the chapter called packing up. I mean, it's really hard to miss this guy I don't even think it's possible to miss it. It's inside this red box that you have to interact with anyway and eventually Ellie is going to search through it and she is going to grab the revolver and put it in her inventory. Um, you can also further invest points into reload speed after this. It was definitely my most uh, like sought after perk since it does take a bit of time to reload it and that can be quite deadly in combat if you're overwhelmed by enemies. But otherwise a very good weapon to have, just all around amazing damage the only downside is that you can't obviously apply a silencer to it so this is something that I would use when I was already exposed by the enemy and or maybe didn't have enough bullets in my other pistol or other weapon. This brings us to the fourth weapon on the list which is of course the pump shotgun and basically the first gun in the game that is actually entirely missable but you get this as early as the downtown Seattle area when you reach it the very first time and it's going to be located in the vault of the Westlake Bank. Bank. But once you are there, go inside of it, travel through the rubble and eventually you're going to reach this broken section of the wall, jump inside of the bank and you're going to see there's a whole bunch of clickers and runners over there. So dispose of them quickly, once you've done that, travel all the way to the back of the bank and here is where you will enter the vault. Now inside the vault you're going to find the first corpse which is going to have a satchel next to it, interact with the satchel as inside of it there's a bunch of plans to actually a bank robbery but it also contains the code for the big vault. Once you take that, go ahead and input the code inside of the vault. It's basically this one right here on the screen and inside of it you're going to find a second corpse and you're going to see that that corpse is holding the shotgun. Of course, after committing suicide. But it's basically one of the best weapons in the game. It absolutely shreds everything, especially limbs. If you're shooting enemies in the limbs, it's basically one hit KO. This brings us to the fourth weapon which is going to be the bow and you actually get this in the Hillcrest chapter I think that that's Seattle day 2 uh, but it's basically after um, you reach this point in this house right
right here um, it's unavoidable so don't worry about that but once you reach the garage of that house you're going to be jumped by a stalker and maybe you noticed this maybe you didn't but that stalker also happens to have a bow on his back so once you take down the stalker and kill him also make sure that you're grabbing the actual bow because you can actually miss this if you aren't picking it up now the upgrades for it are pretty self-explanatory we have the draw speed and stability but there's also the third one on top which is the range finder and this adds a dot on the enemy that kind of indicates where that arrow is going to fall onto it so it lets you better compensate for the gravity when sniping enemies from afar with the bow but by far my favorite has to be the craftable explosives arrow that you unlock in the explosives tree it's so much fun to pull off when you can make an entire group of enemies explode and even if you hit just one of them you're eventually going to see that their upper half has gone into pieces or maybe even like the lower half depends where you shoot them but it's very satisfying and very fun to pull it off nonetheless this brings us at the very last gun that ellie can get the sixth one on the list and also the one that you get in the very end of the game basically in the very last chapter in the very last mission this is of course the silenced machine gun one of the coolest if not the coolest weapons in this game it's also very fun to use it's basically an automated well smg um it's silenced so this means that you're going to have an easy time to take enemies off but it cannot be upgraded since it's obviously already too powerful not much to say about it outside of this but the next area is going to be uh, the perfect playground to test this weapon since enemies are also filled with a ton of ammo for it in the first place and this finally brings us to the second portion of the video which is of course all about the rest of the six weapons that you can get for Abby. Just like in the case of Ellie, Abby also comes with her two default weapons. The first one is the military pistol and the second one is the semi-auto rifle. Now the military pistol isn't too different from the semi-auto pistol that Ellie uses so I'm not gonna stay on it too much. Um, it's basically using the same types of upgrades like fire rate, stability, recoil and capacity. You also have access to crafting silencers and apply it to it but outside of this I don't think there's any difference maybe a little bit in terms of damage I would expect a military pistol to deal slightly more damage than the regular semi-auto but I, I didn't see that in the game at the very least the semi-auto rifle on the other hand is the first like big gun that you have access by default for Abby it's uh, it's basically a very powerful weapon it deals a ton of damage it's a one-shot tap kind of like shooting weapon um, it also comes with some really interesting stats it, it can definitely one-shot enemies and it is a high damage dealer um, but of course its biggest upgrade is its burst fire upgrade that lets you shoot three bullets or three rounds into the enemy with one single tap of the bun which means more often than not that uh, enemies are going to die way quicker but it also means that you're going to deplete your ammo much faster um, this is also the reason why I kind of put it off for a little bit up until in the later sections when I had enough rounds to go with the third weapon for Abby or the number nine on the list is going to be the hunting pistol that you get in the on foot chapter where you play in this section with Mel and Manny but basically you're going to reach this facility with the big boat suspended by the ceiling you're going to have to pass that using a ladder and once you reach the other side into the next area you're going to see this building going on one of its walls you're going to see that there's a crack inside of it so pass through the crack and here is where you're going to see the next safe this is the safe combination for it by the way if you want to input it and kind of skip on it um, but it basically provides you with a hunting pistol and it, it's one of the best weapons in the game as in it's slow it deals high damage and there's also a high damage perk on it that you can further invest points into it and there's even like specialized ammo that you can unlock and craft for it to deal additional damage so all around amazing weapon maybe even better than the revolver this brings us to the first shotgun for Abby, number 10 on the list of course, the double barrel shotgun. Now you get this in the Chinatown area in the hostile territory chapter. Um, again, I've talked about this in one of yesterday's video about this uh, Jasmine Bakery shop right here. But basically once you reach that area with the alleyway, just go on the left side in the very last shop that you see on the left side. Once you're inside of it, head over upstairs and you're going to see that there's this gap that you can squeeze through but there's also two clickers inside of that room so quickly dispose of them and once you've done that go onto the balcony and you're going to see that there's this ledge that you can jump off onto the next building 
do that, head over to the left side again and then right again and here is where you will see that there is a hole in the ceiling. So jump through the hole, take care of the enemy infected that just ambushed you and then take the shotgun from behind this counter right here, it's basically right behind it stuck on one of its walls. Once you've done that, I also suggest crafting some of those like fiery shotgun shells that make this weapon so much more amazing compared to the previous one, it basically lets you both deal a ton of damage with the regular shots but also set enemies on fire since it also like bursts fire out of the nozzle when you do that. This brings us to number 11 on the list which is the crossbow, you get this in chapter 31 the coast when you reach the big boat, um, it's going to eventually be behind one of those doors, um, it's basically in the hands of a dead soldier, we are going to pick it up automatically anyway so this cannot be missed but it's actually a really amazing weapon, it has a much higher range than of course the bow since it's more powerful, it makes it easier to hit headshots with it from very far away and there's also a 4x scope that you can apply to it to basically transform it into a very silent sniper, um, otherwise not much to say about it outside of the fact that it does take a bit of time to actually recharge it unlike the bow and it's also way easier to get back the arrows since they don't break as often. This brings us to our very last weapon on today's list which is of course the flamethrower, yes it does make a return from the previous The Last of Us but unfortunately only Abby can get it and use it. Now this is something you get in chapter 34, The Descent, it's basically when you play with Lev and reach this building, you're going to have to descend through it and reach the lower levels to exit on the other side, but basically you're going to reach some of these apartments, one of these apartments is going to have this bathroom with this semi-closed door so you are going to be able to squeeze through the gap, it's the only one that has a door like this, but also you're going to see that there's a hole in the wall and by the end of it there's going to be a railway, so use the railway to reach the next bathroom on the other side and here is where you will find a corpse that holds the flamethrower in the hand. If you miss this point, don't worry, you're going to get it automatically anyway later on in the chapter, but this is the earliest you can get it in. Now just like the silenced SMG, this is another weapon that you cannot upgrade and even see at the workbench, but it does function in a very different way. Unfortunately, it's also not as OP as it was in The Last of Us 1, so it's not going to one-shot zombies or one shot set them on fire, but instead it's going to take a little bit more than that to do it. Um, which is why I don't recommend continuously holding the click mouse button in order to like um, throw flames at the enemies since that's a waste of resources, instead tap it like 3 or 4 times at most and most of the clickers and regular sized enemies are going to die in those 3 clicks and for the shamblers or bigger enemies it's going to take like 5 or 6 clicks, but that's the best way to do it. Nonetheless, this is it with all of the weapons that you can find and use in The Last of Us Part 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and peace.